Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video 11, and today we're talking about the Unison Shaper Mode, and this is going to be found in the Sample Engine. So let's load up a new preset here from Engine 1. Let's go from Wavetable to Sample, and then here we're going to load up our default grand piano sound. Now, as we've seen before in previous videos, over here on the left-hand side, we have Unison. But however, right here, we have a drop-down list. So there's a couple things to talk about here. None is pretty self-explanatory. There's going to be no effects here. We have the unison, which we talked about before. And then we have a reson resonator, which is a very cool effect here. So this is going to be six bandpass filters in parallel. So there's a couple controls here that we need to talk about. The first one is going to be the course. So take a listen to this, how this changes the sound here. And here on the bottom, it says offsets the fundamental frequency of the resonator from the pitch of the sample or the grains. Next up, we have the dry wet, which is going to be kind of like a mix knob for this is going to be basically if this is off here, then all the way to the right, full resonation, and then in the middle, half and half. Now, the real cool part about this here is the inharmonic, and it's a good way to make metallic -y or bell sounds. So, for example, we just have this piano. If we turn this all the way up, and we start changing the inharm right here. Maybe about 0.6%. Let's turn this up a little bit. And we kind of give almost a bell type of sound, maybe a music box kind of thing. Let's turn this up just a little bit more here. And if we hover over this knob here where it says inharm, this is saying it spreads out the frequencies of the resonator filters in harmonic relation to the center position. And we could also go the other way as well. But the higher you go more so to the right, you're gonna get much more of that type of metallic -y bell type of sound. So we start off with a piano here, and if we did something kind of like this, bring down the sustain, bring up some volume here, We pretty much get a bell, and if we had some reverb here, some delay, let's put a little delay in here, and some reverb. And it's interesting because we started off with a sample of a piano note, and then changing, changing to the resonator, we kind of make this type of bell, music box, glockenspiel kind of thing. So pretty, pretty simple, pretty, pretty cool effect here with just a little bit of delay and some reverb. So moving on back over here, we have the resonance knob. And it's kind of funny how it says in the, in the description, sets the resonance for the resonator. I guess you can't really get more accurate than that. It sets the resonance. Because if they're bandpass filters, you got to have some type of resonance control. And this is probably the global control for those bandpass filters. A very cool effect, and especially this is just with a piano sample, but try to familiarize yourself with this type of effect. Maybe put some different samples in there. There's a lot of samples here to choose from, so definitely play around with that as well. It's actually very cool. And moving on here, we have another one here. We have a bit crush. So a little bit, um, if you don't know what a bit crushing is, this first knob, decimate, this is going to reduce the sample rate. So whatever you're at, 44.1, 48.0, whatever you have, it's going to reduce that amount, the, the samples it takes of a waveform. So as we bring this up, and then now we have bit depth. So this is decreases the amplitude resolution of the sample. The less bit, bit depth we have, the less quantization of volume we're going to have. Bit depth and sample rate are videos within themselves because they're very deep talk, it's, uh, topics to talk about. But in a nutshell, decimate is going to be your sample rate reduction and bit depth is going to be the amplitude resolution or the reduction of your amplitude levels, I guess you could say, with this knob here. And now we also have a key track. This is actually kind of cool. So listen how different these notes sound when we press the key and have it on and off.
so the sample rate decimation follows the pitch of the note. I think it's actually kind of cool to have it on. And if we turn it back our effects on right over here, we can kind of listen to see what this would sound kind of in a patch environment. And it could almost sound a little bit like a hi-hat kind of, or a clap or some sort of thing like that. You could also use it as a percussive type of sound. So on and so forth. Moving on here, we have the modulation. So once we turn on this modulation here, we have the option for frequency modulation and ring modulation, which our modulator is going to be right here. So let's pick a different sound here. Let's go for maybe some drone ambient, some dark space tube here. So you your st start position. And reset our envelope. So you can do a lot of cool effects with the frequency modulation right over here. Let's turn off our effects over here because those are still on here. So frequency modulation we talked about in a previous video. Also ring modulation, I'm going to dedicate a separate video to that because that's a whole deep conversation within itself. It's kind of like amplitude modulation, but there's some little differences that we will get into in a later video. And then in this modulator, what we talked about before, we have the relative absolute in Hertz, which we covered again in a previous video. So that pretty much wraps this up. The resonator and the bit crush are more so the unique things that we had to talk about in this video. So thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next part. And we're going to start diving into the harmonic engine, a very, very cool one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.